Well, hey folks, good Wednesday afternoon. What do we have up here? Oh yeah, a rather grumpy looking John Sanders. Hey, I'm glad to have you here. We're gonna be talking about short-term disability today at uh, Apex Insurance Group. And this is often a topic that we're not normally going to be discussing because it does involve anything other than just regular employees. As a matter of fact, it, uh, it incorporates uh oh, do I have the wrong microphone on? Yep, that's it right there. So let me, uh, oh, okay. No wonder it sounded so awful like I wasn't there. Maybe that's why I was frowning. But today we're going to be talking about federal employee short term disability. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and kick this thing off because it is so very important that we all understand this is a very unique market and it's a very unique marketplace because it's an area that not too many folks know things about, but we want to get you acclimated to it and the potential, the possibility of growing even further into it. One thing here is that uh, we want to help you all get here early. If you get here early, you'll see some of our basic agents. You'll see some of the commercials. Uh, earlier, just right before this, you saw three of our cat videos that we put together for agent recruitment. And as a matter of fact, according to Dan, our digital services director, and I called him anything other than a thousand different names, but Dan saw some huge metrics uh, for agent uh, acquisition utilizing these cat videos. Evidently, cats sell and John does not. That's the thing that we could walk away from. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and stick with that. One thing that we would like to look at is there's many different things that makes Apex Insurance Group different than the 1,000 other folks out there that can promise you products and a good time. And uh, one thing that I do want to help all agents look forward to is we provide your edge towards success. So one of the things that we're looking for in this product today is protection. Short-term disability for a government employee is much in need. As a matter of fact, it provides the additional protection that many of the federal employees that we talk to on a regular and recurring business, uh, what ends up happening is it's the difference between bankruptcy and not bankruptcy if an injury or illness occurred. Next is the security. You know, finances does offer a lot of security. Imagine the times in our lives when we did not experience financial security and we knew how, well, I can promise you one thing, it was terribly, terribly frustrating for me and it made me very, very insecure. And, uh, you know, so this is the tool that can help a government employee be that much more secure. The peace of mind that comes from knowing that the income is taken care of in the event of an accident or illness is something that provides a lot of peace of mind to a government employee. And it is for us as agents, it is something that we can grow with and grow for. So uh, the growth of it is uh, alone, you know, is amazing because there's additionally Referral-based selling within the government market is extremely, extremely amazing and wonderful because it is a very uh, closed-in market. As a matter of fact, many insurance agents don't know how to approach the market. And uh, on a separate topic, we are experts at that. But many employees uh, of the federal government, they don't have friends or they don't have very many friends outside of their work. Just take a look at uh, most of America. Most of the, uh, the friendships are based within the work stratosphere. So um, feds have other feds as friends. So referrals work well. So it's just worthy of an exploration. We're asking you as uh, prospective agents of this initiative to take a look and see if in your exploration, if this looks like it would be a unique program that would help you and be beneficial to your customers, to your market, 
and to your personal finances as well. We'll do something here later on today that we don't normally do in a presentation and give you an income example just because it's so much outside our normal scope. So this uh, webinar is an agent-based only uh, presentation. So when you stop and you think about disability, it's really uh, an interesting concept that there is not a government uh, short-term disability product available. There is nothing that is government-sponsored other than workers' compensation, and that's only an on-the-job disability product, and it has to be ruled a work-related or an on-the-job injury uh, in order for that claim to be paid. Also, another thing to consider is there is a disability retirement and an individual has to be employed by the federal government for 18 months before consideration of that uh, type of a retirement, and that's it. It's a retirement, and often short-term disability situations last for a short period of time and people go back to work. So let's dig in a little bit more about our federal disability coverage facts. Uh, the Social Security Disability Insurance is coverage that workers earn through participation in Social Security. Next, another thing to understand is the Social Security Act defines disability as uh, something that's very narrowly defined. It's a very strictly defined uh, outcome of something where either a, uh, an injury occurred specifically on the job uh, and an individual cannot work. Next, what we have is disability is often unpredictable. We don't know when it's going to happen. And I'll, tell, I'll share with you some cases where we have marketed this federal market disability product and the specific reasons why people thought it was useful and why they bought it. They didn't buy it uh, for any other uh, reason other than fear of something happening. And any it can happen to anyone at any given time. Next, what we're looking at is social disability payments are really minimal. They're dismal, in fact, and they, they're hardly any money at all uh, in comparison to what the cost of living is and uh, what an individual needs to uh, survive on. Uh, the number of people qualifying for social disability in the last couple of, uh, of years has proportionately dramatically increased. It's more, uh, there's a number of different reasons for that, but uh, of late they were giving out disability uh, payments kind of like candy or rewards for elections or something like that. But uh, there is a tremendous amount of disability uh, work-related disability awards that were made, and you can take a look. Take a look at some of the people that you may know who were awarded disability and ask them for what were they awarded disability for. Now, that takes them out of the workforce and being productive members, but for federal employees, remember, they want to work. By and large, they want to work, but for a short-term situation, they are unable to work. Social Security works aggressively to prevent, detect, and prosecute fraud. As a matter of fact, uh, I was subpoenaed one time uh, for a call center when we owned a call center for an individual that we had hired as a dialer within our U.S.-based call center, and they uh, were collecting disability uh, payments while working. And, uh, you know, you can't do that. If you're disabled, guess what? You're disabled. Another thing, Social Security helps people work without losing benefits. That's transitioning back from disability into a working environment. So that's something worthy of consideration also, but that's not, that's, uh, not really anything to do. This is a third-party disability product, and it's available for sale to federal employees across the United States. So let's talk about it. Why explore and sell short-term disability insurance? Well, plain and simple, one in four people in America are going to be injured in such a fashion that they are going to require short-term disability at some point in their work career. And that is everybody. That's you and I, and that's the pilot that flies in the sky. That is also the Lyft 
driver. That is virtually everybody. And in addition, if you take a look at the financial information that's floating around America right now with the debt situation, most Americans are simply one paycheck away from bankruptcy. They're living it nearly right here at their income level, and they are just over broke. And that's all that a job is anyway, is just over broke. But many Americans are unable to deal with any kind of financial loss situation whatsoever. Another reason that we're looking at short altern- uh, short-term disability is uh, what alternatives are there to short-term disability insurance? Well, there's not many because many Americans don't have any type of savings whatsoever. No savings whatsoever. So consequently, what ends up happening is bills go unpaid. When bills go unpaid, then uh, what also adds up is late payments over the limit charges, blah, blah, blah and people end up escalating quicker and quicker into debt. Uh, As we take a look here, a short-term disability premium is is just a small premium in comparison, but yet it can ward off a world of headaches in the future. So most folks do not have $18,000 to $72,000 in the bank in order to uh, watch out for Uh, having anything that can encounter a disability situation without having to um, uh, basically uh, have to worry about it because I think the recommended national uh, numbers are anywhere between six and 18 months worth of income in the bank. And I would venture to say that most of us as agents, we don't even have that much money in the bank just sitting liquid just in case we're unable to go to work. And personally, I did have a friend and one point in the past in the insurance industry who they themselves were injured in a work-related accident, basically as an independent agent, going to an appointment and somebody ran a a stop sign, uh, causing them the inability to go to work for about eight weeks. And uh, the insurance company, the the at-fault insurance company had to pay loss of wages. And what they did was, thankfully, this agent was a high-producing individual, so they did not lose any income whatsoever. And uh, the income that was lost was substantial because this agent made good money. Let's also take a couple of other things. Is short-term disability insurance worth it? (laughs) Well, the bottom line is it is worth it if you're the one that needs it. And many federal employees, many postal employees, they are well aware of coworkers who have been put in situations that have needed short-term disability and have not had it. And uh, for whatever the reasons that they have not had it could be varied at best, but the fact of the matter is they listen to people lament day in and day out after the fact about how difficult it was or how bill payers were being chased for debt situations or things like that. Also often, in the ability to not work in the federal government realm, if you're not able to go to work, you cannot start back to work, not when you feel you're well, but when the doctor releases you to come back to work, okay? So if you are in a on-the-job incident, you're not coming back to work until that doctor releases you. And and how, how no, you know... How do you know when that's going to end up happening? That could be, you know, they may release you back into the working world uh, two, three, four weeks after you think you're good because doctors work at a different pace than their patients. And remember, they they never provide you the service that you want, and they never get you in and out of there as as long as they can have billable hours, right? So anyway, that's kind of sarcasm here. So just stop and think, you know, auto, we maintain that auto and that renter's insurance, and it's not worth it until there's physically an accident. And then we're glad that we had it, okay? Uh, I can tell you, I had a family member that had just bought renter's insurance, and uh, within 72 hours, they lost an entire house on an electrical issue uh, and while they were out of town. And talk about good timing and good use of premium dollars just before something happened. But the fact of the matter is, you are really happy to have that type of coverage when the need arises. 
So, where can a federal employee buy short-term disability? <laughs> Duh. That's why you're here, right? You are here to learn where they can buy it from, and that from is you. It makes no sense. I want you to understand for the employee, it makes no sense to be able to try to run a marathon if you can't even run around a block. And the reason I say that is I believe that uh, before any other financial planning needs to happen in anybody's life, in anyone's life, federal employee, um, any type of an employee, when we're dealing with civilians, um, you know, if they don't have some kind of a plan to protect their income, we have no business as agents protecting and trying to build up wealth. You know, because you have a 25% chance that you're going to suffer a disability uh, before you end up in retirement. You also suffer a one in, uh, I believe it's a, a one in three chance of not even reaching retirement age because you may end up dying. Hold on one second here. Pardon me, I had to put my cough filter on. So the thing is, is you need to do a whole lot of planning. And uh, when we talk to agents, this, uh, you know, this is one of the things that we share with them because the importance of putting a short-term disability. Now you also have to understand, I run an agency called the, the Benefit Coordinators. The Benefit Coordinators works exclusively with postal and federal employees around the United States, and we provide not only uh, benefit information uh, under a FINRA designation and General Services Administration, as well as uh, the service disabled veteran owned um, business status and were approved with NASA and blah, blah, blah. We've got bells and whistles. But the other thing is, is that one of the things is, is that we try to educate that this is the base level product that needs to go out the door. Now, often the other, the independent agents that we work with, they often see life insurance or annuities or this, that, and the other thing. But you know, you've got to protect the first thing that's likely to break. So here's the information. Basically, short-term disability considerations is what is the current monthly income being considered? How long can the federal employee go without having an income? and how long can the benefit period be extended out to, and how long will the carrier pay in the event of a qualified disability. And those are the things that we're gonna look at. One of the things right now we're gonna take a look at, it is a group issue chassis, which means that everybody qualifies for it. As long as you are a member of the federal or postal service, so you're a federal employee or a postal service employee, and a full-time or an employee that works more than 30 hours a week, then you qualify, no questions asked, for this product, assuming in a couple of cravats that uh, you have been at an in-work status or an uh, at-work status in the last 30 days, then there's no other real reason why an individual would not qualify for this plan. It is a maximum of a $3,000 a month benefit, and that is based upon... Uh, you cannot pay more than 64%, 66% of an income. And in most cases, $3,000 a month exceed, uh, does not exceed the 60% limit for government or postal service employees. So I believe our actual uh, a average sale is about $2,600 because a lot of employees are just buying what they need uh, to survive just at the bare minimum. There is a 14 or a 30 day elimination period, which means that you could go 14 or 30 days without a check and then the benefit would kick in. And this mostly has to do with the amount of premium that would be paid under that kind of a circumstance. And we want to make a minimum burden on the, gov on the employee and whatever they feel they can go because some folks can beg, borrow, and steal for a couple of weeks. Others can go 30 days. It's, uh, it's all up there, but pretty soon, even your brother-in-law is going to become quite burdensome if it goes beyond 30 days, right? You know, and, uh, and we do offer a 12-month benefit period with this product, so it means that if an individual is uh, injured for 12 months, it would pay for an entire year. 
And the other thing is it is payroll deductible. Now, there are pre-existings and things, but it is payroll deductible. And if an individual is in an out-of-work status due to a disability, then premiums are automatically paid after 90 days. So that is a very wonderful, wonderful option within this plan that no one that does not have to pay extra for. Here's some other facts that go hand in hand with this. There's a high referral capability because for those of us who market this product, uh, uh, they're, uh, you know, to a government employee, fellow coworkers want to know because they probably all heard about Gus, who not too long ago was uh, basically slipped on the stairs going out of the shop and wasn't able to, uh, you know, wasn't able to work for a period of 16 weeks because he had uh, a broken leg in four different spots and they had to pin it and then they had to put him in a rack and he couldn't even get out of the hospital for the first six weeks. So, you know, there is a lot of referrals going on within the sale of these products. Additionally, it's much in demand. Uh, the federal government has, uh, the federal employees have wanted the government to offer it, but uh, our elected leaders uh, have failed to bring a, a manageable program to the employee much less they've they've tried to get it offered i guess on three separate occasions and uh, they brought it up but nothing has ever come out of the halls of congress or the senate for this there are advances and renewals for you the agent which makes it highly lucrative because there are trails that will be paid uh over a long period of time and we'll see here the income capability of this product if you choose to market it Another item is it's an easy online app. All you have to do is carry the app. Uh, 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 well, the application is on an internet-based application, and it's uh, simple questions that can be answered in a period of less than 10 minutes, and you can be in and out. The employee must start their own payroll deduction document, but beyond that, that is so simple. You're not going to find an either, easier method of enrollment uh, whatsoever on any product, I can assure you. And finally, there's 50 state availability. So it doesn't matter. You can live in the state of confusion, and then you can go ahead and write somebody in the state of despair. Wait, hold on. Yeah, California's confusion, despair is New York, but anywhere in between, okay? And, uh, of course, Dan, my digital uh, strategist, uh, strategist says to stay clear of any political speak and uh, of course I kind of just uh, forgot about that but in any case whatsoever I can promise you that any uh, 50 states this product has application now there are some states where you need to maintain a non-resident license in either Tennessee or Washington DC but the capability is there Let's take a look at a 12-month example of what income, potential income, would be of marketing this product using a $2,000 a month uh, benefit amount to a government employee. I believe I'm using a federal employee premium chart here, and this is the bi-weekly premium. <clears throat> the bi-weekly premium, and we see that if five cases, five cases, one for each finger on your hand, to include your thumb, that uh, a monthly commission at the end of the first month would be about $2,982. And it is that same way for the first six months because that you are issued advances. So you're working on an advance for each of those months. However, in months 7 through 12, you'll find that there are rear end or trails or uh, trails that are being paid against that first year commission. So at the end of the first year, you can see that there is quite an income possibility. And as long as you continue to write that many or more every single month, you can see that the income capability is quite significant over a period of time. Additionally, we do not factor in any renewals uh, in any of this illustration, but this is a very unique product that we can assure you that uh, I've had well over 20 years of experience in marketing this product, and it is an amazing product in the government market. For anybody who is actually interested, the federal government has a lot of people, 
and all you have to do is watch a tragic situation unfold in television and look at all the little blue and red whoopee lights that appear for federal employees. They're everywhere, and you didn't even know that. But cabinet-level agencies, large independent agencies, smaller agencies, and even folks like the, um, the United States, uh, the, the, the library system for the Hall, of, uh, the, the Hall of Congress, Library of Congress, I'm sorry, you know, is a small agency. There's 52 agencies that make up what they call the small independent agencies of the government employing well over 1,500 employees. But you can take a look uh, that the number of employees over any particular time are not going away. Government employment into the millions will stick around for a long time, regardless of whatever uh, uh, administration is in, it is advantageous to keep a large number of employees on hand. Those numbers on hand are your potential customers if you're marketing this product. Excuse me. So it makes it very, very, uh, a very, very unique situation because just take a look. Uh, also, you can take a look at here within each major department of the United States government, just alone at the VA, there's over 300,000 employees. The Postal Service has well over 580,000 employees. Department of Education, 4,200 employees. Uh, you got the DOD. Now, active duty military are not eligible for this product, but civilians that work within the Department of Defense at the various service branches are eligible. How about the Department of Interior? There's over 75,000 of those people in Homeland Security. Come uh, next week this time, um, as a matter of fact, uh, on next Thursday, I'll be uh, jetting my way to Florida, and uh, I'll be visiting some of those as I go through security as they protect the skies. So, um, you know, there's a lot of TSA employees as well, and they are all eligible for a guaranteed issue short-term disability product. And uh, this is just a very, very unique thing. And within the states, within the states, uh, you can take a look here. Uh, in the state of California, 50, 152,000 employees that work for the federal government. Illinois, 44,700. I made a point one time to take note that uh, the city of Chicago has more postal employees in the city of Chicago than the entire state of Oklahoma. Take a look here in, in other states in Minnesota. Uh, 17, nearly 17,000 government employees, Ohio, 50,000, almost 50,000 employees. And then further as we go in, even Wyoming, this very small state of Wyoming, 4,900 employees. Now that's a very small number, but you got to remember, I bet they all know each other. And when they all get together for, uh, for whatever, uh, that is good referral-based marketing there whatsoever. Pennsylvania, 62,000 federal employees. So one thing that we do want to bring up during this conversation is the fact that there's only one way to fail in this, in this whole program, and that's not to try. If you do not try whatsoever, I'll guarantee you that you will miss everything that you never take a shot at. Right? That didn't make sense at all now, did it? Here, that's how you hit it. Okay, you take advantage of a program, the training is provided, everything is virtually automated, it's a very simple program to understand, and it's virtually just a product. And uh, we can offer all kinds of assistance to help you become successful in that program. And we wish you that you would give it every thought of success, okay, or every thought for the consideration of that success. So Apex Insurance Group offers a variety of different YouTube channels that is designed to assist you and help educate you. We as a uh, larger organization really can help you as uh, agents grow and develop into much, much better agents and uh, help you build your business acumen in a number of different ways. So one of the ways that we do is we offer the basic agent channel. 
and it's designed to basically appeal to new and veteran agents across the United States by using the tips and tools that have helped them become successful in times past. And uh, you can watch the YouTube channel, and uh, it's called The Basic Agent. And uh, you can go to the Basic Agent channel on YouTube, and we would ask that you click the subscribe button. Also, clicking the chime and the like will help us uh, to advise you when new ones are released. If you're not part of the Apex Insurance Group official team, you can do uh, find out more by giving us a call. You can email us, or you can go online and fill out a form. So those things are important. And finally, we offer bi-weekly webcasts every two weeks. And coming up in two weeks, the top five key selling points in how to basically convince your clients to invest. And uh, we know we're not investment agents and we're not really trying to convince people, but you know, how to, how to uh, work the sale to their advantage. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to give us a call here at Apex Insurance Group. And I thank you for attending today's webcast.